Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video. In this video, we review five fragrances, as you can see from ozfragrances.com. And I threw a couple of extra samples in here from a Facebook fragrance group that I got. So these are the loose samples in the box. And this box is pretty full. And I do have another box um, with a few more loose samples in there. So let me just quickly um, go onto my handy dandy document on my computer where I've got a few notes written down from a few of the fragrances that I've already tried. So a couple in this box I have tried. I wrote down some notes on a document. A few of these I haven't tried. Um, so let's do a couple that I haven't tried, you know, and maybe some hype ones or some newly released ones. And speaking of newly released fragrances, um, Aqua Di Jo Parfum. Okay, so we'll start off with that. I think this is a 2023 release last year, unless it's 2022. Um, all I know is they discontinued the Profumo. And a lot of people were saying that this is um, very similar to the Profumo or even it's the same thing. So I want to test, is it the same as the Profumo um, or is it actually different? Because that's, that's kind of like what I hear people talk about a lot. So give it a spray. Oh uh, yeah, and this uh, pink denim jacket, it's from Temu or Temu.com. So... If you are wondering where I bought it, you can just look on Timu. Yeah, this does smell quite different than the Profumo. At least in the opening anyway. This is already way more fresh and I find that the, the Profumo is very green. The rosemary in that is very strong. Um, and the Ed is supposed to be smoky, even though I don't really find Profumo to be that smoky. I just find it to be very green and almost like mossy or something like that. It's like a dark green mossy type of scent. And I don't, I don't really like the, the Profumo version, but already I do kind of think this is a lot better. So yeah, it's not, it's not the same. It is similar, but I think this is closer to Profondo than the Profumo, in my opinion. I think this is a little bit more like Profondo. It's it's very fresh, aquatic, citrusy. Um, the rosemary, yeah, it does smell like juniper a lot. It's still there, it's just a lot lighter. Yeah, it's Aqua Di Jo, as I remember. Um, they haven't really done much with this, so it's pretty much just like the other DNAs. And for Parfum, I think it's pretty decent. Uh, even though I'm not really a big fan of Aqua Di Jo, I think this is... Uh, if you like Aqua Di Jo, then you get what you, you would expect with this one. Um, I did like the EDP, but then... After trying the EDP a few times, I kind of changed my mind on that one, and I wasn't too into that, the new EDP, so um, I think when I first reviewed it, I thought it was the best, just because it was like the most different out of them all, but now I don't really think I really like the EDP as much anymore, so yeah, this one is, um, it's pretty nice, you know, it's, it's like Profondo, Maybe with a little bit of the original DNA in there from the original Aqua Di Jo as well. I get like some kind of, um, like a very light floral smell actually. It is like, um, one of those aquatic 
types of florals they use in a lot of those aquatic scents. So it, it is green, aquatic, a little floral just to give it some like some freshness. Um, citrusy, the woodiness. I think the woodiness is just from the rosemary or the juniper, unless there is wood in there separately. But yeah, this is, I've always said this with Aquity Joe, I think they're very good quality fragrances. I think they use the best quality ingredients they can get. Um, and as you would also expect, it is full of ambroxan, so you get a lot of that punchy ambroxan in the opening. So you gotta be careful with this. If you overspray this, it is a little bit annoying to people um, because it is an ambroxan bomb. And a lot of people they may be a little bit over this fragrance and it may overpower some people as well. When I say they may be over it, Aqua Di Joe is just a very old fragrance that a lot of people have smelled a million times. Some people just don't really want to smell it anymore because they've smelled it too much. Kind of like One Million, La Mail, Dupe, Polo Blue, um, CK1, like a lot of those old classic scents, Dior Sauvage, another example. Um, so I'm gonna look on Fragranica, just see what's in it, the notes. Um, and this that was the first time trying this one, so I haven't actually tried that one until just now. So I haven't got any notes written down for that. Um, parfum. I, I like the bottle as well. The bottle looks pretty cool. It's in a nice frosted glass bottle, but black. It's kind of like half black, half clear. Um, yeah, so I think the the floral smell is uh, a little bit of clary sage and geranium in there. So I knew there was like that aquatic type of... Um, aquatic type of uh, floral smell in there. Even though with sage, it's it's hard to know if they're using the sage leaf or the sage flower. I think in this it is actually the sage leaf, so not the flowers. Um, the cool fact, sage comes from a family of plants called Selvia. Um, pretty big uh, family of plants. They have like chia seeds, flax seeds, I think come from salvia. Actually, no, I think chia seeds, just chia seeds come from salvia. And been... Sorry. And there is a hallucinogenic type of salvia um, that people smoke and they get hallucinations. So, probably not the best thing to talk about when I'm talking about fragrances. But anyway, yeah. I just wanted to give you that cool little fact that salvia is a pretty big, diverse range of plants that has a lot of flowers, a lot of herbs, and a lot of edible members of the, the family. So next we'll move on to another fragrance. I think this is one I've been wanting to try for a while. It's called Lune Feline by Atelier. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it Atelier or Atelier? 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 Um, there we go. Lune Feline. Oh, it's uh, Atelier des Ors. So I don't know if there's a difference between Atelier and Atelier des Ors. Um, are they two different houses or is it just the same house? Because I know there is another fragrance house called Atelier as well. Okay. So, give this one a spray. All I know about this is it's supposed to be a vanilla scent, like an, an ambery vanilla scent. So, let's give this one a try. Yep. The opening, very good quality vanilla. This is a high quality vanilla that you would expect from a good um, vanilla fragrance. But there is something um, very earthy and bitter about this. 
and it comes through after you first spray it. A cardamom. I can smell cardamom. That's what it is. Wow. So, first impression on the opening was really nice quality vanilla and some resins in there. So, I think it's benzoin and vanilla. Um, but then I get this like bitter but fresh spiciness. So I think it's cardamom or nutmeg. It, it really smells like cardamom to me. But I also get this wood in there, like uh, whatever wood it is. It's kind of like a little dry, a little on the dry side like the a light dry type of wood so some woods smell a little bit more light and dry and some woods smell a little bit more dark heavy dense maybe even a little bit moist so it's pretty hard to explain what a moist wood would smell like but there's dry wood i also consider vetiver to have that dry woody smell as well so maybe vetiver Whatever that type of wood is, I do like it. Um, but the red, I do think it's a resinous fragrance. So I think the, I think there is some resin in there. Maybe even besides benzoin. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Is it like frankincense? Because it's not. It's not like that smoky, but some, it reminds me a little bit of frankincense, but a really good quality frankincense, because I usually hate frankincense, but this is like, if it if you were able to balance it really well, and then it actually smells good, it would probably be like this. So I'm just going to say a resin, because I don't know what type of resin, but it does have this resinous smell with like this um, cardamom smell in there too. So resin, cardamom and a really nice quality vanilla besides that yeah woody and that's about it um so let's have a look on fragranica at the notes loon feline okay apparently there's an extract an extract as well i don't think this is just a normal one Okay, yeah. So there is vanilla, vanilla, cardamom, and even though it doesn't say benzoin, it says styrax. So um, styrax is benzoin. It's the same thing if you don't know. Benzoin just comes from the styrax plant. So if you see the notes styrax listed, it's the same thing as benzoin pretty much. And I, I do get that smell. I get benzoin, vanilla, cardamom. And the other the other resin is Peru balsam. Uh, I don't know what that smells like, but I'm assuming that's the other resin I was getting in here. And it just says wooden cedar. So cedar is that dry woody smell. Um, yeah, I really like cedar because of that reason. It is light, dry. And cedar's just a really nice wood. I like the smell of cedar, so that's probably why I like this. So, yes, I would say it's true to its notes on Fragranica. It smells like like uh, what it's advertising. So, you get what you expect with that one. So, I need to look for another fragrance to review quickly. Um, have I reviewed... This one, Johnny. Okay, I'm gonna review Johnny. I have already smelled this one, by the way, because um, I don't know. I just got bored, wanted to try it when I was at home. So this one's called Johnny by Soradora. I th I think this is another hyped one on TikTok, but then again, I don't use TikTok. But I know this is a new release. That did get some hype, at least in the fragrance community anyway. So, um, at the moment, this is a little a little talked about right now. 
got some people talking about it. Mm. So the opening of this, I really get like this cherry smell. Well, at least in the lid at the moment. I'm getting like this, like a cherry smell. So let's give this a spray. And try and figure out what's in it. So, there's two things I smell. The very first spray, that's actually sour apple. So this is like a sour apple candy. Like, wow, that's like the most, that's the closest I've ever smelt to a sour apple candy lolly before. Holy moly. That, okay. I like that, that candied sour apple smell. However, I know, I know it does change a lot in the dry down. Quite a lot, actually. So, I was saying it gives me this cherry smell. Because the dry down actually turns into, like, a cherry smell. Like, you know, your Tom Ford Lost Cherry. It starts off sour apple, and then it morphs into, like, this Tom Ford Lost Cherry type of smell. So, like, a cherry starburst, for example. And also, it smells a little bit like Zerzhov Italica in the dry down as well. So you get a lot more of the gourmand notes coming out in the dry down. I think you get you get like this this powdery vanilla with like some cinnamon, some like um, maybe tonka. So some more gourmand ingredients. So. Um, I'll look at my notes because I did actually write down uh, some notes for this one when I first smelled it. So, yeah, the dry down, um, you get like this um, caramel smell in the dry down and some vanilla, cinnamon, you also get this, um, It smells more like a baked food, you put it that way. So the dry down is a like a baked apple pie, that makes sense, like a, a warm apple pie. Cinnamon, apple, caramel-ish. You get like this pastry, I think pastry smell. So it, it's like, pretty much smells like a baked food, you know, like something you would cook in the oven. Hmm. So this is this is really nice. So I like this one in the opening. I think it's fantastic. I think this is a really good fragrance for people to try. Um, both guys and girls should try this one because it is unisex. And if you love a gourmand, this is like up your alley for sure. This is a, a really nice gourmand scent. Um, I don't know what else to say with this one. So let's look on a fragranica what the actual notes are. Okay, yeah, so puff pastry, cinnamon, vanilla, apricot, almond, apple, caramel, it's got some nuts in there, some plum, peach, white musk, osmanthus, so. Uh, the main fruity smell you get is baked apple. So it's a little bit different, like usually a fragranica it would say apple, but this time it says baked apple, so. I find that quite weird because it has a sour apple smell to me, like a sour green apple. But then that cherry smell, I think that has to come from the plum for sure because um, it's the only red type of fruit in there, like the blue reddish type of, well, dark fruit, let's say dark fruit. It's the only dark fruit in there, so that's probably the cherry smell coming from the plum. And um, cinnamon, vanilla, puff pastry, Caramel, that gives it that apple pie smell in the, the opening and mid dry down, you know, so There we go. Um, definitely try this one out. Johnny by Soradora um, I've got some more fragrances I gotta, I gotta uh, talk about so Okay, 
Okay, we'll do this one. I think it's. I think I've already reviewed it. I'm just gonna quickly check. Nope. Let's uh, review it then. It's called Happy Dust by Narcotica. Something about these Narcotica fragrances. I I think I'm I'm a fan of the brand already. They they've got me hooked after I tried Narco Oasis. Um, they got me hooked on that one. So Happy Dust. This was another one I did try and I liked it. Maybe a little bit basic actually. This one's more just like a simple vanilla caramel smell. Yeah. Um, actually, that didn't really come out properly. There we go. Um, so yeah, I'll just show you again. It's called Happy Dusts by Narcotica. So another thing about this brand, I was put onto it by the Bowtie Fragrance guy just by watching his videos. Um, I think he's a pretty good YouTuber when it comes to fragrances. He's um, got a pretty good idea of what smells good, what people like, so um, shout out to him anyway. This is a nice caramel vanilla. Yeah, just caramel vanilla and there's something a little fresh in there. I can't figure out what that is actually. It smells like a fragrance I've tried before, so um Bianco Latte maybe. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that that um, Bianca Latte smell. Like if you've ever if you ever tried that fragrance, I think that is like a creme brulee, caramel, or coffee. Can't remember exactly. It's been a while since I tried that one, but um, I don't remember the notes in that. But I remember the smell of it, and it's like this is is a little similar to Bianca Latte. Um. But then this dries down into a more simple caramel vanilla, maybe a little bit of musk in there too. So simple vanilla, there's not much to really say about this one, but I do like this. Another unisex fragrance that it's simple is pretty hard to hate. If you if you just like simple vanillas, it's a good one for you to try. Um, and I wish I had wrote down some more notes about this one. All I've written down is it's got a burnt sugar creme brulee smell to it so um yeah i probably should have wrote down some more notes the first time i tried it so uh i can't really tell you too much about the dry down right now just what i'm smelling on my skin uh, yeah it's sugary and it's vanillary so let's look on fragranica happy dust um uh, narcotica Bam, there we go. Um, it's got mango, coconut water, matcha, jasmine mate, and then obviously it's got that brown sugar vanilla tonka smell that I was talking about and the mask. So the main thing you smell is um, brown sugar, vanilla tonka mask. However, in the opening, I said there was something a little fresh in there. It was only for a split second, but I could smell something fresh in the very opening, and I think that was the um, the mango or the jasmine or coconut water, something like that in the very opening. But it's it's gone completely. That lasts about ten to twenty seconds, and then it's gone. I mean, it's pretty much gone. So that freshness doesn't last very long at all. But my god, it's a nice fragrance, guys. So, uh, I recommend trying this one. Now, something I will do. I just want to tell you that um, Loon Feline. I can smell the dry down of Loon, Loon Feline now. I don't like the dry down of Loon Feline. It's getting worse and worse the more it dries down. 
and his cardamom smell is becoming too strong. It starts to smell like Leighton by Parfums de Mali. This really has this like latent smell right now. Cardamom, sandalwood. I don't like the the drawdown of Lune Feline. It smells like Leighton or Parfums de Mali Altair. It's also quite similar to Altair as well. And yeah, Leighton or Altair. It really reminds me of Lune Feline. Uh, so the dry down of this, meh, not so good. So, um, one more fragrance to review, just for this video. I should probably find one that I've already smelled. So I've got like Tom Ford Vanilla Sex in here, the new Tom Ford fragrance. I've got Gillan's Tobacco Honey. Like, I've got I've got heaps of fragrances, honestly, but um And I got blue to Chanel just for my own personal reasons. I wanted to try the Par Farm. So this is the Par Farm. I don't really know if I should review this one, but I bought it anyway, just to let you know, because I like that. Um, sheesh. Sorry guys, give me one second to find a fragrance that I haven't reviewed yet. Here we go, we'll go. I think Aqua de Parma Colonia. I'll just check if I have reviewed it or not. Bam, perfect. This is called uh, Aqua di Parma Colonia Essenza. So, let's give this a spray on my arm. I know this is a high fragrance. I see this talked about all the time. And that's what made me want to try it. But honestly, I don't really like this fragrance. Because in the opening, it smells like a barbershop fragrance. It's like really... It's just really mossy. Citrusy and mossy. But the moss is too strong. It's like this medicinal oak moss. And it just overpowers absolutely everything. Um, yes, the citrus is a nice quality citrus, but I don't like the oak moss. It's just an old man fragrance. It just smells like old people. Um, however, if I compare it to all the other Fujia barbershop type scents, this is probably at the top of the, the Fujia barbershop scents. This has got to be like one of the better ones for sure. I find this a lot better than Dior Eau Sauvage. I find this a lot better than, um, like, your Amouage Beach Heart. I think this is pretty up there with, like, um, Roja Vetiver in terms of, like, how good it is. Roja Vetiver also has a really nice citrus. But I think Roja Vetiver has... The balance is just a little better. So the Oak Moss is not as heavy in Roja Vetiver. Um... So I still prefer that one over this. However, this does change a lot in the dry down. This turns into a little bit more like um, Dunhill Icon. So it does change in the dry down. It, it gets, yeah, like I said, more into like Dunhill Icon. Um, and I'm just going to look at my computer for the notes again. Um, citrusy. Mossy, um, vetiver, it's got like this bright natural quality citrus, so the citrus is, is really good. I will give it credit for having a really nice citrus in here, because that, that's not easy to do. Like, I think Aqua di Palma is an Italian brand, or inspired by Italian, and yes, they're absolutely probably the best at using citrus. Their citrus is always great quality. Um, you just can't really beat Italian citrus, honestly. So, um, another thing, um, yeah, Barbershop Fujia 
mossy uh neroli yeah that's what it is so the dry down you get a lot more neroli and that's what makes me think it smells more like downhill icon so the neroli stands out way more in the dry down and then it gives it that downhill icon smell so that they your main notes citrus oak moss vetiver neroli but it's pretty pretty much dominated by the oak moss in uh, the first half of this fragrance. So, look at Fragranica at the notes. Colonia Essenza. Okay. So this has um, the Roly bergamot, grapefruit, jasmine. Pettigrain, orange, musk, vetiver, rosemary, oak, moss, rose, lily of the belly, clove, sage, patchouli. Yeah, it's um, it's got a lot of citrus. They're probably throwing just about like all the different citruses in there besides lime. And I like that they've done different types of citrus. So instead of just using citrus fruit, they've also used neroli and pedigree they've used the leaves and the flowers of the citrus too so um big brain move from them by by using the entire plant of the citrus rather than just the the fruit so that's a pretty good idea um that's probably why it smells so good um citrus wise it's probably why it smells more natural because they've used the entire plant like the leaves the flowers and the fruit um, rose is probably the rose and cloves are the biggest surprise for me because I don't smell rose or cloves in this um, which is a good thing because I don't like rose or cloves and uh, rosemary well that's pretty hard to, to pick out you know so I think I think the citrus is overpowering the the rosemary a little bit too much because the petty green is already a green note, and petty green is a pretty is a pretty strong type of uh, green note as well. So a petty green might overpower rosemary if you use petty green. I don't know. That's my theory. I th I think rosemary is pretty strong as well. Like I got Aqua Di Joe on this part of my hand, and then I got. Colonia Essenza on this part. And I do think that, um, yeah, I just think the Pettigrain may be a little bit stronger than the Rosemary in that. So that's that's the only thing I'm going to say about that. But it's not, it's not a bad thing at all. I think for this type of fragrance, that's what they're going for. It works well. Um, I can see who this appeals to. This is for the more mature person. Um, even if you're not mature, it, it's probably a more of a Mediterranean smell. It could be a culture thing. So I don't, I don't hate it. If you put it that way, I think it's not a bad smelling fragrance. I can, I can just say that personally, I don't like oak moss that much. So it's a bi it's a biased subjective thing. So don't be offended or anything if I don't like this. It's just personal. So. Which one do I like the most out of all of these? Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. I like Johnny the most. So Johnny is the best out of all of these ones. And then second best. Second best is probably between Happy Dust or Aqua Di Joe Parfum. I think I prefer Aqua Di Joe Parfum over Happy Dust. Um, it's a little bit more fresh, a little bit more wearable. But Happy Dust is definitely third best, so they're the top three. Um, now, fourth and fifth place. Which one is worse? Loon Feline or Colonia Senza? If you like the smell of Leighton and Altair, you would probably like Lunfaline. 
I'm not really one of those people that really likes Leighton that much. Or Altair, I think it's it's pretty meh, pretty overrated. This is at least fresh. So I'm going to put this fourth, Colonia Ascenza, just because it is more fresh. Probably more wearable. The dry down is a lot better. Um, it's more versatile. And I think just more women are probably going to like this over Loon for Lean. Um, I could be wrong, you know. I just, I think... Lunifilene, it may just be me, but I get that latent smell from it. Anyway, that's my five videos. Five videos. Five fragrances, I mean, sorry guys. So, um, that's my ranking. My five fragrances done for this video. Thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoy your day, and I'll be back um, sometime soon with another another five fragrances and i'll make sure the next video is better than this one for sure guys with some some more hype fragrances so peace out like and subscribe if you want to see more next time have a good day